kill not only the law of man, but the law of God is broken. Thou shalt not kill, thunders the voice of God from Mount Sinai. And thou shalt love thy neighbor, says Matthew. If I were to deliver a sermon, I would make that my text. But you are no mood for sermons. Perhaps the law of man would impress you more than the law of God. Therefore, I call upon one more fitted than I to address you. Our Sheriff, Buck Gordon. Thank you, Brother Gordon. Thank you. I represent the law of man. The law of God is the law of man, but that law has been abused. I've done many things in this town. I was born here. I went to school here. Fought and played with a lot of you fellas ever since we were kids together. And what I've got to say isn't to my liking. Dad Turner, you raised me as if I were your own son. And your son Clint is just like a brother to me. But the same man that raised me and all of you men I grew up with elected me to be sheriff of this county. And I took an oath to uphold the law. And I intend to stand by that oath. Mr. Turner, you were forcing your cattle over land that Mr. Walton leased from the government. You were trespassing. Gentlemen, the open range is a thing of the past. Mr. Walton has a perfect right to that land and nobody can take it away from him. In trying to stop you, Mr. Walton took the law in his own hand. A man was killed. It's going to stop right now. There isn't going to be any more range war. And if there is, you will have me to deal with. Now, if there's any of you got anything to say, say it now. Speak up, Turner. You got plenty to tell him. You bet I have, Vandal. Our sheriff informs us that range war has got to stop. Just as he said, I raised him. But if that doesn't make any difference to him, it doesn't make any difference to me. But if he's going to side with a bunch of coyotes that had let my cattle starve for the lack of grazing land, then he and they are heading for trouble. And plenty of it. I only got enough grazing land for my own cattle. Well, that's mighty funny. There used to always be plenty of grazing land. Where are all the new cattle coming from? I've been buying them. Got more cattle than you ever seen. Yeah, I'd make a bet that I've seen some of them. Take that back, Turner. No man can accuse me of rustling. Well, I'm accusing you. Hold on. I'll shoot the first man that draws. Now, gentlemen, I think we understand each other. Remember, we're in the house of God. Brethren, let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, send down your shining light that it may show the dangerous path we are following, that it may show us the path of righteousness and brotherly love of mercy and peace.
that its glorious light may drive out the fog of hatred and bitterness that has been making us flounder to destruction. Amen. Amen. That speech helped out a lot, Buck. Things ought to be quiet now for a while. Maybe. Still, you better stick around and keep your eye on things. Yeah, where are you going? I'm going out to Walton Ranch. Judy Walton's all alone. Somebody ought to be with her. This is no time for our Turner to be out to the Walton Ranch. <laughs> And it looks like trouble. Turner and Walton are headed for the same saloon. Thanks. If you're headed for the saloon, I wouldn't go in there if I were you, Dad. Why not? Isn't Sunday? I've just come from what some people call a peace meeting. And I don't like the taste of it. So I figure to wash it out of the drink. Any objections? None. As long as you keep the peace. Walton's in there, Dad. Yes, I know. And I've got something to tell him. And I'm going to tell him right now. Forty years, but this is the first time I ever knew Charlie to feed his liquor to a polecat. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm doing wrong by the polecat. Never heard of one stealing land or cattle. That's a lot out of you. You're inviting trouble and you're heading right for it. You've been losing cattle, so have I. But I ain't been running around accusing my neighbors. I've been hunting the rustler. Yes, and I'll make a bet you didn't have to go far. Maybe not so far as you think. Are you aiming to say that I'm the rustler? Maybe. Maybe not. Anyhow, it's somebody we all know. Root beer, Charlie. And in 24 hours, I'll tell you who he is. Looks like there's going to be some fireworks. Well, I guess you'd better go home. You better let me in on that, Walton. That's my job. Maybe it is. But when I tell you who it is, there'll be no squirming out of it. Just what do you mean by that last remark? I mean that I don't trust you or anybody that's got anything to do with you. Rustling cattle ain't nothing compared to running a man off his own property. I've been using that property for over 40 years. I don't have to fix it so as you get run out. I'm going to run you out myself. You're taking on a big job. You come on my place, and I'll shoot on sight. You. you better not, Dad. Put it away, Walton. You had your little drink. I'm asking you to go. Come on, man. Let's go. Oh. 
Remember, Turner, I'm shooting on sight. Hold it. You're not leaving here till Walton is out of town. Isn't going to be any excitement. I might as well ramble home. So long, boys. Goodbye. Sorry, Dad. I had to keep you apart. Buck Gordon, you've turned against your own kind. From now on, I don't know you. You keep out of my way. piece of work today. I guess that'll keep him quiet for a while. I'm not so sure of that, Jack. Old man Turner looked like he meant business. He sure did, boss. That old man was hotter than a firecracker. It's a good thing Clint wasn't in that saloon, or there'd have been fireworks as sure as shooting. Clint's out to the Walton Ranch right now. And if they meet, I'll be seeing you, Jack. The only thing that counts is that we love each other. If our marriage won't settle matters, we can go away. Besides, there's plenty of open country. We can get started someplace else. Perhaps, Clint. But I hate to leave Dad like that. And I know he'll never give his consent. Well, he's got to. There he is now. Oh, Clint, let's wait. Hank, I want you and the boys to keep your eyes on them cattle. I don't want them out on the range. Right. You hear that, boys? Yes, sir. Yes, Say, Mr. Walton, why are you so particular about keeping this stock in the crowd? That's a lot I bought from Biggers. I'm keeping them in until he gets here to identify him. Oh. I'm going to ask your father right now. And I won't take no for an answer. All right. Young Clint Turner's been hanging around here quite a lot lately. I'll put a stop to that right now. What are you doing here? I've been waiting here to talk to you. What about? Judy and I are going to get married. We want your consent. You get out. Get out of here and stay out. Daddy, please listen. It means so much to us. Go to your room. Daddy, please. Judy, I want you to go to your room. I told your father I'd shoot him on sight if I saw him on my ranch. And that goes for you, too. You better get moving, Parker. I'll handle this. You can turn in if you want, Hank. All right, boss. Just as you say. Oh, Mr. Walton, why don't you give me a chance? I ain't given any Turner a chance. No whelp of the Turner litter can marry my daughter. Unless it's over my dead body.
That'd be one way of doing it. What is it, Miss Judy? Something's happened to Dad. Mr. Walton. Mr. Walton. Daddy! Hey, what's all the excitement? We heard a shot. Sounded like it came from the house. What happened? Somebody shot Mr. Walton. Who did this, Judy? I don't know. Well, I do. It was Clint Turner. How do you know? I just left him, fighting with the boss. Was Clint here, Judy? Yes. But he couldn't have done it. Clint wouldn't do this. Come on, boys. We know what it was. Let's get him straight on it. If there's any hanging to be done, I'll take care of it. Oh. I suppose that you would arrest your best friend to do that, eh? I'll arrest anybody who breaks the law. And I'll shoot anybody who tries to interfere. Do you understand that? All right, Mr. Sheriff. We'll give you until tomorrow morning to put Clint Turner in jail. And if you don't get him, we will. Do you understand that? That'll be just about enough out of you. Judy. You better go on upstairs. You're not going to arrest Quinn, are you, Bud? 
I'm afraid I'll have to, Judy. But why? Because he's directly accused of the murder of your father. You don't think he did it, do you? Whether I do or not, I've got to go get him, Judy. It's the toughest thing I ever had to do in my life. Don't you worry about it. Everything will be all right. Now you run on upstairs, Judy. I don't know whether I was right or wrong. All I know is that we're heading for a lot of trouble. Well, what do you want? I told you to stay out of here. I know you did. But I have to see Clint. Clint ain't talking to you no more. I've got to, Dad. Dad, nothing. Get out. Come on, Clint, I want to talk to you a minute. Can't I wait until morning, Buck? If you step outside this house, you needn't come back. I'm not going to have any son of mine in cahoots with a double-crossing dog. Whether you like it or not, I'm going to take Clint with me. Just what do you mean? Walton was killed tonight. I'm arresting Clint for the murder. You don't think I did it, do you, Buck? No, Clint. I know you didn't do it. But if I don't take you, Walton's gang will. Nobody's taking my boy. I think it's best. For who? You and your law? Well, you'd hang your best friend because you're packing a badge. But you're not going to do it this time. Get going, Clint. Take the south road and head for the border. I'll hold this double crosser here till you get away. I'm gonna make a break for it, Buck. Don't come after me. You're making a mistake. Running away will make everybody believe he's guilty. I've got to get him. You're not going to put anything over on me after what happened today, Mr. Sheriff. Dad, I, I don't think you believe me. No!
Stay where you are, Buck. You better come out of there, Clint. Stay where you are, Buck. Nobody's gonna stop me. You're coming with me. Don't come any closer, Buck. I'm gonna get out of here even if I have to shoot my way out. I'm taking you back because it's the best thing for you. Put it away, kid. Let's get going. I can say is that he was a grand old man. Sure was. Why, look. There comes Buck. And he's got Clint with him. We can go now, boys. Sorry to do this. Well, that's all right. Always wanted a bunk like this. Nice and quiet. Peaceful. There's only one thing I don't like. There's no drapes on the windows. Hey, Sheriff. Yeah. You forgot something. So I did. You remember this? You're wrong, Buck. I know what you're thinking. I didn't kill him. I took a shot at a coyote on the way out to Walton's ranch. I swear I did. Get him? No. He got away. Bed. I'm 
telling you, Buck will never hang Clint. You let him get away, sure as shooting. You think so? Why, sure. Why? They're pals, aren't they? Well, how about that sermon Buck made about upholding the law? The law don't count when it comes to the Turner family. And especially with that sheriff. Well, let me tell you something. If Clint Turner is found guilty of this murder, I'll guarantee there'll be a hanging. Well, we'll see. We'll see. So long. Bye-bye. Another drink, Charlie. Sheriff, that number of vandals over there in the saloon making some mighty unkind remarks about you. Yeah? You drunk? No, just nasty. Nasty, huh? Yeah. Well, that's just about my style of fellow today. Clint is supposed to go to trial today, but I bet that yellow sheriff never goes through with it. You didn't mean that, did you, Vandal? Why, yes, I did. I didn't mean that, did you, Vandal? I guess not. Here's your hat, Buck. Sorry I wrecked your joint. I lost my temper. That's all right. I'll send you the bill next election. Okay, Charlie. <laughs> Atta boy, Buck. I wouldn't do that if I were you, Vandal. Come on, boys, name your poison. The drink's on Charlie. Find out anything? No, Clint. What the devil's the matter with you, Jack? Why don't you get cleaned up? Shave, put on a clean shirt. Do something. You sit around like a bump on a log. You know the trial's in a half hour. I'm awfully sorry, boss. I can't go. I've got lumbago. I'm awfully sick. Sick, huh? The only thing that's going to keep you away from that trial is a broken back. Here comes the jury now, fellas. They've been out just two hours. It's 12 minutes after five. Gentlemen of the jury, what is your verdict? Guilty. 
Flint Turner, for the murder of John Walton, I must sentence you to hang by the neck till dead. Tomorrow morning at sunup. I wonder how old man Turner likes that. I reckon you'll just naturally have to like it. Won't you sit down? Thank you. I'm sorry I was delayed, Miss Walton. It just seems like every time I... It's all right, Mr. Bigger. The sheriff isn't here yet. But he ought to be any minute. Well, it seems to me like them cattle must have had something to do with it. Now, if he thought they was rustled... That must be him now. Excuse me. Oh, hello, Buck. Hello, Judy. Mr. Biggers is here. That's fine. This is Mr. Biggers, the man Dad bought that last lot of cattle from. Howdy, Mr. Biggers. Howdy, Sheriff. Aren't you going to see Clint? Buck, you won't let them hang him, will you? Not if I can stop them, Judy. What was the matter with that last bunch of cattle you sold Mr. Walton? Nothing that I know of, but Walton seemed to think they was rustled. Now, I buy and sell a lot of cattle, being as how I didn't know which steers they was. I told him I'd be over today to look them over. Wrote that in a letter, didn't you? Yes. How did you know? Found a letter in Mr. Walton's hand the night he was shot. Sort of figured that it had something to do with the shooting. Maybe so. I wrote him I'd be up to identify the cattle. I see. Mr. Walton said he'd bring in the rustler in 24 hours. That'd give you time to get here, see the cattle, and tell him who sold them to you. And the man that sold you the cattle wanted to get rid of Walton before he could point him out. hard. Let's get him in the house, Miss Walton. All right. I'll get a basin and some water. Just call the doctor and he'll be right over.
someone was sure in a hurry to get them steers out of that corral. You fella sure pick a fine time in the morning to come visit. Come on, open up. What do you want? It's time for the hanging, Jack. Can't be. Buck ain't here. What's that got to do with it? Buck, Sheriff, and ain't nobody going to be hung around here unless he says so. Buck isn't going to get out of hanging Clint Turner this way. You're his deputy, aren't you? I was. Until y'all woke me up. Then get started. If Buck isn't here to do his duty, his deputy's got to do it. But... Never mind any buts. You're going to bring Clint Turner out here, or we're going in to get him. Start moving. Come on, Clint. I guess they come after you. Where's Buck? That blamed if I know. He should have been here to take care of this business himself. Kinda expected Buck would be standing by me for my last ride. Oh, you won't be lonesome, Clint. A few of Walton's friends are here to keep you company on that last ride. Now, come on, get going. Well, here's a good hat I won't be needing, Jack. Oh, gee. Thanks, Clint. Think that's swell. Come on, Jack. We got horses. All right, get through there. Let's ramble, boys. Take them away. Where are you going, young fella? Never mind, I, I got things to do. Why, Buck, the doctor said for you to be quiet. Who got me, Judy? I don't know. I found this on a nail down by the corral gate.
Thanks. I'll be needing that. You mustn't go now, Box. You're too weak. What time is it, Judy? Almost five. Almost five. Son of... Clint! He ain't no shape to ride. I'm going with him. Wait! I'm going too! the chances you're taking on this. And you all know what it means to me. Yeah, yes. Yes. Well, now, I don't want any slip up on this. Is everything ready? Yes, yes sir. sir. Well, let's go. Too late, Buck. They've already taken him to Twin Oaks. Reckon you figured I'm being kind of late, didn't you? You don't look like you got much to do. Why? What do you mean? I need another deputy. Would you like to come along? Sure thing. Climb on that old pony of yours and let's drift. Buck, where's Clint? They're taking him out to Twin Oaks. Let's go. I'll toss it over there. You hadn't ought to be doing this, Hank. Shut up. Anything you want to say, Clint? Yes. You're about to hang an innocent man. Yeah? Well, 12 men didn't think so. Get on that horse. Take a hitch in that rope. All right. Look. That's 
Turner and his butt's coming to stop us. Flynn, come on up here and put it on him. Wait, fellas. Buck's with him. Come on, man. Hold on nothing. I'm whipping that horse out from under him right now. Stand back, you... Slim, take that rope off of Clint's neck. I'm arresting this man for the murder of Joel Walton. Why, man, you're plumb crazy. Of course he is. You're not going to pin that murder onto somebody else in order to save your pal's hide. Keep out of this, Vandal. The next time I plug you, it'll be in a different spot. I chased you away from Walton's Krell last night, and you shot me. That ain't true. Found that on the Krell gate last night after the shooting. It's off of the pants you're wearing. I never had these pants on till this morning. Vandal gave them to me. Why, he's lying. I never saw them before. I'll get you for this, Vandal. I ain't gonna swing for you. You told the right story, Sheriff. Only you've got the wrong man. Vandal's the one that's been rustling all the cattle. And he's the one that killed old Walton. I never had anything to do with it. Yes, you did. You sold me them Turner steers that Walton was holding in his corral. And I got a bill of sale to prove it. Oh, no, you don't. Put these on him. Too bad I can't fix them around his neck. What a fine double crosser you turned out to be. Uh. Now, don't start to cry, Judy. Everything's all right now. That was a mighty close call, son. It sure was, Dad. It was. Hey, are, Clint. You might meet a coyote on the way into town. Get him this time. Thanks, Buck. Ah, uh, that's all right. Buck, I don't know how to thank you. Don't. Looks like the end of the range war to me, Buck. Yeah? Well, it's just starting for them. 